Welcome. I'm John Quattrali with Unbound Visual Arts. Uh, Unbound Visual Arts is very pleased that you have chosen to join us for this opening program for the new program for the new exhibit, Cat Masala Seeking the Goodness. Um, this, this event is being recorded. So if, if you prefer to stay hidden, just keep your video and audio off. And we've, we've actually done that for you, but we will turn it back on as soon as the video is and and cat is done with the with the demonstration uh unbound visual arts is a unique nonprofit that creates impactful exhibits and programs to encourage learning engagement and change and this exhibit and program fits right in we thank at cat for sharing her art in this exhibit um and and, and for tonight's demonstration uh cat is a prolific painter from the north shore with an art studio in boston uh soa district she is a, she's also a sustaining member of Unbound Visual Arts. So with that, I'm gonna have Kat take over the situation and start the demonstration. Thanks so much, John. And um, thank everybody, um, all you guys for being here Friday night um, on Zoom. <laughs> so, so this demo was filmed live at the Rocky Neck Art Colony so I am going to um, press play. And what I'll do is I'm not gonna play the audio of the movie because I want you all to be able to in, make this interactive. So you can put in the chat any questions you have as I'm going along. And I'll tell you what was going through my head. Some of the things that I couldn't say while I was doing the live demo in front of the audience, there were a lot of q a that was happening while i was painting so I don't, last thing i want to do is bore you so here's a close-up of the painting that you're going to see finished um, in 20 minutes from now and i'm just showing you this um, lady on the uh, far left that was um, christine fisher that nicely graciously posed for me and this is uh just my palette of um this is molten beeswax these are two hot plates you see my arrows they're at about 200 fahrenheit and um, the molten wax is to over here on the left i'm not going to bore you with the history of encaustic but the, the it is one of the most ancient mediums and most archival mediums and you can see them hanging the fayum portraits see from the roman egyptians hanging in museums all over the world to this day from the third century and um, it fell out of fashion. Egg tempera came out and then oil paints came out. That's much easier to paint with. I do mix some oils into the wax. And um, if you want to know that during Q&A, I could tell you why. So I'm going to start playing so you can see. So I basically just randomly choose some colors um, without really looking at my surface and just sort of so I can be, really see her and really look. So you didn't miss anything. This is this is still on my palette. So then I take raw canvas and I lay that down. And you can see it coming through the, the pigmented wax and oil mixture coming through. As this video pans down so you can see it. And this is just a big um, brush that has uh, gunked, up, gunked up bristles on one end. So there's no control. And um, so I just dip it in some wax and I just start, I'm looking at Christine again. Um, this time I'm, I'm looking a little bit at my surface while I'm looking at Christine. And, and then I take that same canvas and lay it back down. I'll add a little more color. I think I'm adding red there, some kind of burnt sienna or something. And then, you know, still, um, it's like in the Rorschach, um, Rorschach test stage. <laughs> and then I'm grabbing some pencils, there's charcoal in there. And, um, and then I'm looking at Christine again. I really didn't have a plan of how I was gonna, each time it's a little different, how I work are a lot different. And um, I was just going with the spirit of the, the moment. So I'm looking at her and basically just doing a bunch of scribbles. So 
this is what I hope to inspire is just, you just start with making marks and scribbles it, you know, and just respond to that as you're going, you know? And I just wait till my eye gets excited and, and then start pulling the image out when it, when it gets excited. Now my wax pencils are getting gunked up. I mean, my pencil pencils are getting gunked up with wax, so they're resisting. You're gonna see some struggles in here too, where I totally can, I'm gonna make this work no matter what. <laughs> so I, I like to show the struggle. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I just said, something about, who the heck knows what I'm doing? <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, then I take some molten wax and throw it down. And I'm gonna paint it from behind. Uh, so I paint on both sides of the canvas because the wax sort of transparentizes the canvas. And so you'll see the image to some extent from the back, as well as the front. It just has a different effect. Now I'm just laying newsprint over so that I don't smudge what's there because while it's hot, everything is loosey-goosey. You're not missing anything. I'm just rubbing it over. And I will take this off and, sh oh, see, that's the back is looking better to me than the front now that I look at it. And it's probably where I'm starting to panic. <laughs> yeah, I can see I'm panicking. I see my face there. No, okay. Then I keep going. But the higher it gets, the, the less control I have because the, all of the wax obviously will be more molten and, and more melty. And now it's going up on the easel so you can kind of see where it's at. But I kind of liked it in that stage. And I see people doing a dance and, you know, which, yeah, which one's crying out to me? Paint me, what about me, what about me? So um, I pick one and then I start, um, <laughs> and don't like that. So I scrape that off and then now it's a big gray mess there. And at that point I was regretting choosing that image and that I should have went with the other image that I saw in that blob. So I like to show some of the history and the struggle behind it. So you're gonna see some of that gray, you know, mess blob there. And I think it adds to the final painting when you can kind of see some of the struggles and um, change, of course. Um, now I'm just sort of cleaning it up. You'll see it again on the, on the canvas. Some of the paint is more opaque and some is more transparent. It's just about, about a, how much pigment I put in in ratio to the oil and the wax. And some pigments are just naturally more opaque. Oh, I think I was jumping up and down saying, stop being so literal because <laughs> my, my tendency is to be too literal and I want to, um, lose the literal. <laughs> so if I leave it on too long, I'm gonna lose the whole image because it's all gonna start melting. So I take it off to cool for a little bit. And now I like, the, I like this phase. Each phase, you know, add something and create a problem. And that's really, I, I think I like the problems because it's just a new challenge and new problem to solve. And um, it's kind of like, metaphor for life, you know, just, I think it challenges my brain to, to <laughs> fire and wire together new neurons. Yeah, so now, um, so that is a caulking gun filled with oil paint. As my black was getting a little gray, too gray for me in this picture, so I wanted a little more intensity to black, so I added some black to the, to the beeswax and, um, oil mixture. Now I'm deciding what to do next. So the reason why I'm leaving my brush in the, in the pot of wax is as soon as I take it out, it's literally cooling instantly. 
Um, so I have to work really fast because it's, it's hardening on my brush as soon as I take it out. So then I scrape some of that back. I decided it was too opaque there. And um, and so again, I can only scrape into it while it's warm. I'm not deciding what, what color, what, what am I doing next? Oh, okay, some highlights maybe in her hair. Some low lights. <laughs> Just white out the, the face for now. The, the features actually, the facial features, I think I was um, not sure when I was gonna put that in, if I was, but you'll see the eyes and nose and mouth pop in in the last minute of the demo. I literally did it in, in the last minute. Just pop those in so you'll see that. I'm scraping away some um, of the opacity on my face. I'm putting some wax behind the painting to come through. Um, again, it's just a different um, visual effect when it's from behind versus on top. And also once it's on the easel and I'm painting uh, cold, I like to put it back on the heat just to make sure it's really fused to the canvas and the heat will um, permanently bond it. And I'll, I'll take it off in a second so you can see it. I was giving it a little air because it was um, getting hot and melty. So sometimes I just shake the canvas to just cool it off for a second. All right, now I see it again. Another phase where I pretty much could have stopped. But it was just, you know, the journey, it's a ride, it was fun. So I keep going. Now I'm grabbing some oil paint, yellow, yellow ochre, I think. Just mixing that in there and a makeshift palette of newsprint over there. And yeah, pop in some light color. And I'm just scraping back while it's hot. The razor. I learned from um, one of my mentors, Frank O'Kane, I'm gonna, um, while, while I'm painting, <laughs> I can tell you, he's a, a brilliant man who's at um, the Art Students League. And that, that was one thing, I, I just learned so much from him and I see the shift in, in movement and space better. So he set it in, under um, Bakla Bit, Bitlichel. Um, known as Vit, who also mentored Robert Rauschenberg, Cy Twombly, de Kooning, Louise Bourgeois, and, um, and of course, Frank. And Frank, um, Vitlichil was, was Hans Hoffman's um, primary assistant. Um, and then Frank was a good friend and student of Vitlichil until he died. Um, So I, I owe a lot to Frank. He's a generous, kind man, and uh, and all my mentors. I'm just showing you my brushes. <laughs> so I never clean my brushes, and I let them harden in in the pots of wax. So you know <laughs> they're out of control. They're 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 not. Um, I just deal with it. It's just the way it is. I'm not going to clean my brushes. It's just not part of my, I'd rather be painting than uh, if you see my studio, you'll see, <laughs> you'll see why I go in there to, to clean and I, I end up 
painting every time. So it's a little neglected in the clean cleanliness and organization side of things. So I'll show you pictures at the end of, of the, um, and you're gonna see a close up of this at the end too. Um, so we're almost there. Um, three minutes left. I'll pop in the facial features, but first I wanted to tweak the, yeah, that black on the, on the right side was bothering me. It's just too heavy. So I was deciding what to do with that. That's what's going through my head. Not Maybe not saying that in the live demo. Once you have too much paint saturated in the canvas and you try to sneak some paint in the back of the canvas, it just won't take any more pigment or paint. And so then I did another solution. <laughs> Okay, so her shoulder. Um, instead, I decided I don't want too much opaque white, so I, I dilute the white down with a little um, clear wax and oil that I just poured on there and mixed, mixed it right on the plate with the white just to give it more transparency. And that clear wax, of course, is not totally clear because I all drip um, pigment, all those wax uh, buckets get contaminated because I'm dripping and paint's flying all around so that nothing's really pure. And so good, I didn't lose anybody yet. <laughs> I promise we're gonna open this up um, in a couple minutes to uh, open dialogue and uh, we can see everybody. All right, so there's about a minute left to the demo and this is where I decide, um, does she need a face? Um, facial features. She probably didn't, but I stuck some in there anyway. So. <laughs> All right, so now um, I grab some hot wax on my hands and see it dry, it dried instantly so I couldn't even get that red wax on the first go because it dried so quick or cooled off so quick and then I add a little blue for eyes and that's pretty much how it's I think it's almost done almost done another couple seconds and it's, I'm calling it done Oh yeah, a little inkling of a shoulder. That's it. That's the finished stage, but of course, <laughs> I bring it back into my studio and I tweak it a little bit. This is a close up of the, the other one I did just that day that everyone was willing to um, see me do another one similar process. This one playing with more abstraction and shapes and movement and a little heavier on the wax and oil and this one even heavier. Oh, but this one sold. I think the transparency excites me, the history, the, the journey, the making of the process. Um, my happy place and it's a mess. You can see that I didn't clean up for you guys. Hey, that was wonderful. Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was just so fabulous to get to sit here and watch you do that. Aww. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Thanks for being here. And it was wonderful to see it again, to talk, <laughs> kind of slow down and you talking about your process. I am so excited about what you're doing, Kat. Oh, thanks, Yana. A couple of questions in the chat. I can read them as well, yes. Sorry. From Carol Moses is is the final image on the side that touches the surface or on the top side that you are working on? 
and see what's on the back. Sometimes the back is more exciting than the front, <laughs> and I go with that. But in this case, the top was was the finish side. Another question. And okay, and from Rosemary, when when you do not have a live model, how do you paint your pieces? Um, oh, Rosemary, that's uh, hi, Patty. Hi, <laughs> I I, um, <laughs> I don't have a live model most of the time. Um, actually, in that demo, I showed up and I really didn't have a plan. I was just gonna see what happens and that's kind of how what happens in my studio but I am trying to work in different ways for and doing sketches from life and um, using that as source material but not necessarily looking at the sketch while I'm painting so it might just get filed away and a sketch that I did a year ago might just pop up into a painting. Does anyone want to um, direct their question live to Kat? Yeah, I was watching you. This is the first time I've actually seen you using this particular medium. I've been watching you on some of your other works. But when you use that hardened wax, mm -hmm. is that purchased or do you mix your own colors and then harden the wax? Both. Both. So a lot of times I make my own mix and with that, and I'll take the, the pasta wax and pour them in silicone baking, you know, uh, cupcake. Right, right. And uh, once it's hardened and use that. It's a virtual three-dimensional exhibit that has, has, that has 20 of Kat's paintings. And if you go to our website, unboundvisualarts.org, you can see it, but you can tour the gallery as if you were touring any gallery. Actually, it's a it's a pretty big gallery that we have. I think you'll enjoy it. Did did Pauline Lim ask her question? I, what was I did I miss it? There's another Pauline. Pauline oh. Lim. Oh no. Okay. Okay. You there me? you are. There you are. Okay. Um, I was taught never to let oil-based stuff touch the raw canvas, and that you always had to gesso the canvas. But I know that that would make the transparency um not come through as much, and I also know that. Like if you put oil directly on the canvas, you get that halo of oil, the grease kind of. So do you, what do you think about that? Right, I'm very concerned about archival and I do know that the oil will rot if oil is on raw canvas that's not primed, um, especially if it's, a raw, if it's a raw material such as cotton or linen um, or hemp. But if it's on polyester, it, it doesn't matter. What I do to get around that is the wax. So the wax is the preservative and that's the buffer uh, to the canvas. So just like the ancient Fayum portraits were on wood. So the wax has preserved the wood all these centuries and it does that with the canvas as well. So that's a good question. So interesting. It's so good to see you guys. <laughs> Great to be here. Yeah, really. There's a, qu a question from Terry, Terry <laughs> Del Percio. Hi, Terry. Oh, there you are. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Kat. At the beginning, somewhere you were talking about things that Frank taught you. Yeah. And one, one piece was about making the other side of the face push back. Mm -hmm. I didn't quite catch what you were explaining. So I was wondering if you can revisit yeah. that. Sure, so it, it was about um, shift in space so that one side is sort of pushing back and, and another side coming forward, either by overlapping one side and sort of underlapping on the other or a push and pull of transparency and opacity. So how did you wind up doing it? Um, I'd have to look at that picture. I, okay. think, I think I did both. I think I overlapped, underlapped, and added a little opacity on one side and a little transparency on the other. OK. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> you gave me a hardball question. <laughs> I still love you. <laughs> I'm glad. 
All right, well, I don't want to keep everybody on a Friday night if there's no more questions. I mean, I love Great to job. hang out Good with job. you. <laughs> oh, thanks, Nella. Pat, can Thank I ask you. one more question? It's Patty. Hmm. You know that I'm working with on caustic and I'm working with a hard surface and I fuse between each layer. Mm -hmm. Did you ever do that? Oh, and yeah. Do you prefer working on canvas to paper? I find I love the Japanese handmade papers. They rip. Um, so I like the canvas because I can stretch it on stretcher bars. Or Good. Thank you. Well, it's almost seven o'clock. Uh, it was a great, great show. Thank you very much, Kat. Thank you for everybody who came. And um, I do encourage you to look at the exhibit. Um, I was mentioning in the chat that we do have a, an in-person gallery as well in Alston, and we're just starting to gear up with that. And we have one call for our, out now, and we'll have a second one probably next week. And we're always looking for good solo exhibits as well. So. Um, be in touch with us or be in touch with Kat to see the actual actual paintings in either in one of her two studios. <laughs> and John is fabulous to work with and um, it's a great organization to support. Thank you everybody for being here. Really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you. Great job, great Thank job John and Kat. Um, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. It was wonderful. Thank Very you. enjoyable way to spend a Friday evening. Yes, absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.